Hey everyone, welcome back to Foolish Engineer. Have you ever wondered how your smartphone can charge safely without short circuiting? Well, today's video will answer those questions and we are diving into a super cool circuit design which is high side current sensing. This is the kind of stuff that engineers use every day. By the end of this video, you'll understand how this circuit works and how to design one. So let's start. First off, let's talk about current sensing. Imagine you have a water pipe running from a reservoir and you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. In electronics, measuring the flow of electric current is crucial for monitoring and controlling the circuit, just like measuring the water flow. Current sensing helps us understand how much current is flowing through a particular part of circuit. This is important for applications like battery management systems in electric vehicles, where we need to monitor the current to ensure safety and efficiency. Okay. But why high side sensing? What makes it so special? Let's say you are in charge of a dam and your job is to monitor how much water is flowing out to the city. You want to measure the water before it gets to the city, right? This way you can react quickly if something goes wrong. That's basically how high side current sensing does. It measures the current before it flows through the important parts of the circuit. In technical terms, high side sensing means you are measuring the current on the positive voltage side or high side of the circuit before it reaches to the load. The advantage, you can detect short circuits and ground issues before they cause major problems. Now let's see what this circuit looks like. The key players here are first shunt resistor. This is like a tiny obstacle for the current. It creates a small voltage drop as the current passes through. The larger the current, the bigger the voltage drop. Next is operational amplifier. This takes the tiny voltage drop across this shunt resistor and amplifies it, making it big enough to measure accurately. And some gain resistors R2, R3, R4 and R5. These resistors help set how much the op-amp amplifies the signal. They make sure that the output voltage is proportional to the current you are sensing. Now let's dive deeper into these components. The shunt resistor R1 is chosen to create a small but significant voltage drop when the current flows through it. Here we will use op-amp OPA192 from Texas Instruments for this application. Resistor R4 and R5 are precision resistors that set the gain of our amplifier. The gain determines how much the op-amp amplifies the voltage drop across R1. So now we can design a circuit which is able to sense the maximum current of 1 ampere and minimum up to 50 milliamperes which should convert this current into proportional voltage in the range of 0.25 volts to 5 volts. For that, we'll supply 36 volts VC supply and provide 0 volts to VEE. You must be wondering why do we need such high VCC? Maybe there is the socket's requirement for other systems. But it is important to make sure that the common mode voltage stays within a range where the op-amp can work properly. Now, let's start the design of the circuit with important calculations. The first key component here is shunt resistor R1. When current flows through R1, a small voltage drop occurs across it, which is proportional to the current according to Ohm's law. So we can easily calculate the value of this shunt resistor based on the required voltage drop by using this formula. So when one ampere current flows through this shunt resistor, the voltage drop across it will be 100 millivolts, 
if you use 100 milli ohm shunt resistor. Now this tiny 100 milli volts need to be amplified to a level we can easily read, which is where the operational amplifier U1 comes into picture. The output voltage is related to the input voltage by the gain of the amplifier. The full equation of the circuit is like this. Here R4 and R5 set the gain of this amplifier and R2 is equal to R4 and R3 is equal to R5 to balance this circuit. Now we can calculate the maximum required gain to provide the output swing using this formula. So the required gain is 50. Now we can calculate the gain setting resistor values using this. We have two unknowns and one equation. So we'll select a value of 1.01 kilo ohm resistance for R2 and R4 and using this formula we can easily calculate the value of R5 and R3 which is around 50.5k. Let's see what happens when different current flow through the circuit at 50 milli amperes the voltage drop across R1 would be 5 milli volts but we have gain of 50 the output voltage will be now to 50 millivolts. At 1 ampere, we already calculated the voltage drop is 100 millivolts and the output voltage is 5 volts. Now we need to calculate the common mode voltage of the amplifier, which is determined by this formula, which comes as 35.29 volts. This high common mode voltage means that the op amp must be able to handle input voltages close to VCC while still operating linearly. This is why the OPA192 op amp is used. It has a rail to rail input feature, meaning it can function properly even when the input voltage is very close to supply voltage. Finally, we should calculate the upper cutoff frequency. It is a frequency above which the op amp's gain starts to decrease which can be calculated with this formula. Noise gain is basically the non-inverting gain of the amplifier, which is 51 just above the required gain, which comes out as 196.1 kHz. You can see high side current sending circuits in battery chargers, whether it's your smartphone or laptop, these devices use current sensing to control how much current is flowing into the battery. This is important because if too much current flows during the charging, the battery could overheat or get damaged. And there you have it, high side current sensing circuit. It might seem like a small part, but it plays a massive role in protecting and controlling modern electronics. I hope you learned something new from this. Don't forget to check the description for reference and simulation files. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button as well. And don't miss any exciting content for the next time.